Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to another Logic Pro tutorial. This video is gonna be a fairly comprehensive guide to importing your own external outside loops into Logic's loop library. So if you've purchased a big loop library or a big sample library, or maybe you use Splice and you wanna get all of these loops and samples into Logic without having to constantly pull up your finder window in Mac OS, this video will demonstrate several techniques for how to do this. Now, generally speaking, there are three main methods to do this. One, you can import loops one at a time as tagged Apple loops. So a tagged Apple loop means it tags the tempo, key, genre, and other descriptors to the loop, and the loop is also converted to an Apple loop. Two, you can import loops one at a time or multiple loops at a time as untagged loops, which means they will change with the tempo, but no key or descriptor information is tagged. Or three, you can import multiple loops as Apple loops in batches of similar loops, meaning you have a bunch of loops with the same key, tempo, and or instrumentation. So if I have five piano loops all in E minor and all at 100 BPM, that would be a batch of loops you could import all together. There are different variations and reasons for using each of these methods, which I'll explain in this video. And if you wanna jump around in the video, I've left the chapters below. Okay, so the first method, importing one loop at a time or one sample at a time and tagging it as an Apple loop. So I've got a folder here with a bunch of loops in it and I wanna start with this one right here. I'll just press spacebar to audition it. So this one has a tempo, it's 96 BPM. It doesn't have a key on it, although that bass uh, kind of does have a, like a fundamental tone to it. For this one, I'm just gonna ignore the key. So one way you could go about this, the first method is you just drag the loop into your tracks area. And then you wanna make sure that you set your project tempo to match the project tempo of the loop. So this is 96, so I'll change this to 96. And you'll see this is indeed a four bar loop. Now you wanna make sure that you set the tempo up here to match the loop tempo, because what you're gonna do next is drag and drop this directly into the loop library. And you're gonna see here that it recognizes 96 BPM as the tempo of that loop. If you don't change the tempo of your logic project, this tempo information is going to be wrong. And now what you can do is you can give the loop a name. I'll just call this full dimes beat and then you can select whether you want this to be a loop or a one-shot. A one-shot is like a sample or a sound effect, something that doesn't have a defined tempo to it that really shouldn't be looped. So we're gonna keep this a loop. And then scale for this is gonna be neither or, or any because there's no key to it. Uh, the genre, I'll set this to like hip hop and then the key I'll set to none. And then what you can do is you can set instrument descriptors. So I'm gonna call this all drums beats. And then you can choose other descriptors here. So it's a single or ensemble. I guess this is ensemble because there are multiple instruments in there. Clean or distorted. Um, it's not distorted. It's, it, it's got some drive to it. Uh, it's kind of more acoustic than electric. Uh, uh, the bass is electric. Uh, I'll call this relaxed, dark. Uh, maybe I'll say processed instead of distorted. Uh, grooving for sure. It's not melodic or dissonant, and it's uh, not a part or a fill. I guess I can say it's a part. And then I'll click Create. And what this does is it will index that loop and add it to the loop library. So now if I just search up full dimes, that full dimes beat is there. It recognizes the number of beats in the loop. It also recognizes the tempo. And if, it, if you set a key for it, it will also recognize the key, I'll do another one uh, with the key in just a minute here. But if you drag and drop this out, you'll see that it's now an Apple loop. So if I change the tempo, let's maybe say I wanna go a bit faster, 108. The loop will automatically update its tempo to whatever the logic tempo is. Now, one other thing I've, I've gotten asked before is people will say, when I drag the loop back in, it's quieter. There's an option here in the loop browser at the bottom where you can select auto leveling. If you turn on auto leveling, 
What's going to happen is the loop is going to have its volume auto leveled and uh, auto compensated for. So you'll see that the volume is a, a bit lower um, when you have that auto leveling option on. But if you don't want your loops to be a different uh, level, when you import them back in, you just turn off that option there. Okay, so drum loops are pretty simple because you don't have to really worry about the key of the loop. Let's import another loop where we have to take into account uh, the key. So I've got this electric piano chords cool a loop here. It's in uh, F minor and it's 85 BPM. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it into the project. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is set the tempo of the project to 85. Okay, and then I'll just drag that over into the loop library. I'll call this cool electric piano chords. This is a loop. This is in a minor key. This is F minor. And the genre, I guess I'll just call this like modern R&B. And you can see the tempo is correct, 85 BPM. And it's already selected keyboards electric piano for me. I'll say this is single, clean, electric, relaxed, dark, uh, maybe it's processed. It's not really grooving, it's not really melodic. And I'll say it's a part. We'll create a loop out of that. And just like it did before, it indexes it into the loop library. So now if I just search up cool electric, there's the cool electric piano chords loop. You can see it's in the key of F minor. It recognizes the tempo and the duration. Now, when you're working with audio loops that have a key, what you have to be really careful about is what you have your project key set to. Because this loop, while in the key of F minor, if I drag and drop it into a C major project, it's gonna transpose the loop to match the key. Now, you can't go from major to minor and minor to major, but what this is gonna do is it's gonna transpose it from a root of F to a root of C. So if I really wanted to keep this loop in F minor as I play it back with the rest of the project, I wanna make sure I set my project key to F minor. And then when I drag this in, it stays perfectly in sync with the grid and I can change the tempo. Maybe I wanna go up to like 96. And if I wanted to change the key, maybe I wanna go up to G minor. I just change the key and the, the audio loops that are tagged with key information will automatically transpose, but the drum loops, because they're not tagged with a key, won't change. Now, another thing to keep in mind here is as you're searching for loops, in this same menu where we had the auto leveling, there's an option here to play your loops in song key or original key. So if you choose original key, when you audition the loop just by clicking on it, it's gonna play it in the original key of F minor. However, if you set this to play in song key, it'll automatically transpose it up to match the song key. So just be aware of this option, or you can choose a specific key that you want to play it in. Now, one other thing I wanna show you here, uh, in addition to being able, being able to search for these, if you go up to Sound Packs and go to My Loops, this will show you all of the loops that you've imported. So here are both of those loops that I've imported. So you can quickly um, you know, get to your custom loops and ignore all of the other loops that are in the loop library. Okay, so that's the first method. That's importing them one at a time and tagging them each with their own unique uh, information and converting them over to Apple loops. Let me delete these tracks and I'm gonna show you a second method where you can import multiple untagged loops all at once. And to do this, you don't even have to drag anything into uh, the tracks area. You can actually just import directly from the finder window. So I've got all of uh, these loops here, and let's say that I want to add in this uh, resampled piano, this synth pad, and uh, this drum loop. So I'm gonna just hold uh, command and select those three loops. They're all in different keys. They're all at different tempos. One's 90, 107, and 140. 
Uh, one is E minor, one C minor, and then the drum loop doesn't have a key. If you just drag and drop these directly from the finder into uh, the loop library, you'll get this message that says add to untagged loops. Now this is something in Logic that's really cool that a lot of people don't know about, but what you can do is you can actually create a separate untagged loops library where it will add these loops into that untagged loops library as user loops. And these user loops will conform to the tempo of your project, but they ignore the key. So if messing with the key and messing with the key of the song is annoying to you and you just want to sort of do things manually, perhaps using untagged loops is a better option. Now, just to kind of keep things a little more organized, you may want to come in here and rename these loops, which you can do by right-clicking or control-clicking on them. Go to Show in Finder, and this will show the location in the Finder where these loops are located. And this is under Users, Your Username, Music, Audio Music Apps, Untagged Loops. And you can see I've got a drum sample library in here already. And then my user loops, these are just user loops that are not in a collection. And then what you can do is just rename the files like you normally would, or you can rename them before you drop them in. So I'm just gonna take a moment off screen and rename these. Okay, so I've renamed these in the user loops folder. And then what will happen is in Logic, there we go, it'll update and you'll see that the names all update. And I can drag these into my project and use them just like any other loop. Now, the difference here is that these loops, like I said, they'll conform to the tempo, but the, the key is not going to automatically conform. So the drums don't really matter here. The drums are not in any particular key, but I've got one loop in C minor and one in E minor. So what I might want to do is take the one in C minor, select the region, Go over to the region inspector and then use the transposition feature here to transpose this up or down in semitones. So if I want to go from the key of C to the key of E, I need to go up four semitones. And then I'm not going to use the entire um, piano loop here. I'm just going to shorten that to two bars, repeat it out a few times. Let's see what that sounds like. So that's how you can work with untagged loops and how you can import um, multiple loops all at once. Now, I wanna show you one more way of doing this uh, for the second method with untagged loops. And this is particularly helpful if you have large sample libraries uh, like I do. This is a Drumworks drum sample library. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this uh, from the uh, untagged loops. So I'm just gonna open this up in the finder. So I'm just gonna pull this whole drum library out. In fact, I'm just gonna delete it. I have another copy of it elsewhere, so it's no big deal to just delete it. And I'm gonna go into my main sample library and you can see I have all these Drumworks drum sample libraries. Now, if you wanna keep your drum sample libraries or sample libraries or effects libraries, whatever this may be, if you wanna keep those libraries in the same location, you can actually just drag the entire folder into the untagged loops. So check this out, just drag all six of these folders in. It's gonna add them to untagged loops. So I've got my regular user loops, but then I've got these individual folders of samples. Now, if I open these up and I try to find a specific sample, you'll see that these are still stored in my sample library on my external drive. So I got a bunch of crash symbols in here. I've got kicks and snares. We've got some really nice uh, Ludwig Black Beauty snare drum samples. And you can just drag these and drop them into Logic, use them in Quick Sampler, use them in whatever uh, plugin you like, whatever sampling plugin you like. So this is a really convenient way to store all of your uh, drum samples and be able to access them from the loop library. But if you drag them in as folders like this, it's just going to sort of link to the files wherever they are on your computer or on an external drive. Whereas if you drag in the audio files themselves, it'll actually add them to your user loops. 
Now, alternatively, another way to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove all of these. You right click or control click, and you have to do it one at a time like this. Alternatively, if you do want these uh, drum libraries or sample libraries to be inside of the user loops or be inside of the untagged loops folder, you can simply just navigate to that folder. So here's untagged loops, user loops. I can even make a folder here and call this, you know, sample libraries, something along those lines. And then what I can do is I can actually just drag and drop these entire sample libraries into that folder and it'll actually physically make a copy of them in that folder and they'll now show up in logic and they won't point back to your external drive or the original location of the samples. So whatever way you prefer doing it, so whatever way you prefer doing it is completely up to you. But now I have all my sample libraries in here and they're not tied to an external drive. They're not tied to any other location. They're in my untagged loops folder. Now, the last method is to import in batches. Um, this is when you have groups of similar loops that are either the same instrument, the same tempo, or the same key, or some combination of those things. So here what I have is a bunch of uh, loops that are labeled uh, bedroom soul. I've got some bass, some guitar, some piano, some vocals. They're all at 130 BPM. They're all in the key of B minor. So what I'll do is just drag and drop these into Logic, put them on uh, new tracks for now, and then I just need to set the tempo. So I'll set the tempo to 130. So now the tempo of my project matches the loops. You can just drag over all these, drag them all into the Apple Loops library all at the same time, make them loops, set the key to minor, set the key to B minor, set the genre, I'll set this to modern R&B. And what you miss out here is you miss out on the specific instrument descriptors. You can set these descriptors, but you can't set them to individuals. Now, I believe Logic will do its best to extrapolate the category that these are in based on the text that's in the file. So I'm gonna set some other descriptors here. Single, clean, electric, relaxed, dark, dry, and grooving. I'll hit create, and this is going to import each loop in one at a time while still accounting for its key and its tempo. Okay, so they're all imported. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the originals, and then I'll just go in here and I'll search up bedroom soul. I'll set the key to B minor, so they all play at the correct tempo or the, the correct key. So let's build a, just a really basic arrangement here. I'll pull in the chords. I'll pull in this vocal melody. Pull that back there. And we've got these electric piano chords as well. Let's see what that sounds like. And because these are tagged Apple loops, I can change the tempo up. So maybe I wanna go 140 instead, and maybe I wanna change the key. Maybe I wanna go from B minor up to C minor. Let's mix this up with one of our untagged drum loops here. I'll grab this chest puncher beat, pull that in, loop that out a few times. Now, if you end up with a situation like this where the drum loop is like playing back double time, what you can do is select that loop, go over to your region inspector, go to speed here, and you can set it to double time or half time. So this will slow down the pace of that loop.
And there you go. That's three different methods of importing loops into the Apple Loops library or using them as untagged loops. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.